You're watching Rogers TV, Durham Region North. Welcome to Oxford Scugog Life. I'm your host, Jackie Hermans. So earlier in the week, I had a chance to meet with a wonderful goldsmith and artisan, Monique Van Well. And you might recognize her signature piece, which are, it's a beautiful circle of branches where you can get little balls to represent each of your family members. And so we'll be meeting with her and talking about some of the, the beautiful pieces that uh, she's been making for families for beautiful heirloom pieces. I also had a chance to meet up with Carolyn Clemenson, the aquatics manager of the Axe Pool, and she is giving us some advice about how to stay safe with our backyard pools. We're going to have pool parties and things like that, so I think it's important for, to make sure that uh, everyone within that backyard, especially those little kids, are going to stay safe. Now, we had a recent tragedy, and it's the second student tragedy of the year. Uh, we lost a 16-year-old boy in a single vehicle car accident. And so in this episode or this uh, segment, I'm going to be channeling some messages to assist us with this grieving process. Not only my heart, my heart goes out to the family and friends that uh, were directly uh, are directly impacted by this tragedy, but also the community at large has been going through a grieving. So we'll be offering some assistance with that with these channel messages. So all that and more on Oxford School of Life. We'll be right back. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. I started playing softball when I was five years old. I loved it because it was all about having fun with my friends. And it still is. From little kids to adults to seniors, Softball is a sport for everyone. Join us. Hello, I'm Jonathan Van Dulcet. Most everyone knows that the Royal Canadian Legion exists, but what exactly does it do? Xander Spire is a member of the executive branch 419 of the Legion will give us some insight on my next show. Join us right here on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. So with me today on the show, I have Monique Van Well of Monique Van Well Designs. And Monique is, a, is an incredible goldsmith. And uh, she, uh, Monique, I have been admiring your pieces for a long time now. I've seen you at the, the studio tour. Uh, I've seen you at the grocery store. <laughs> I've seen you at uh, school events. But yeah, I've been admiring your work for a long time now. Thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. How long does it take to become a goldsmith? How many years of uh, schooling do you need to do? What are the type of courses you need to do? What um, do you do all that? Well, there's different ways, but I did my uh, study in Holland uh, when I was still living there. Um, was a four-year course in uh, on actually the goldsmithing school in uh, Schoonhoven, that's in Holland. And um, so that was four years and one full year of apprenticeship. So after that, I was, uh, uh, yeah, I got my diploma. And then it's like a, a driver's license, right? Like you start working from there and you learn even more by doing your, uh, yeah, apprenticeship year. Uh, and then the experience you build with work. And over the last, uh, well, since uh, I graduated in 98. And since I've been making my own work uh, back home in Holland, I had a collection already. And since we immigrated in 2000, uh, I've kind of, yeah, I, I've built up quite a, uh, a customer list over the time, over the years, and I've done a lot of work, most uh, custom. 
and um, really enjoying it and, and love what I can do for people because people, a lot of people don't understand what I could do for them. And since everybody else, everybody has the little problem with, uh, or they don't even see it as problem, but uh, have a little stack of all the pieces in the jewelry box sitting there for years. And there were pieces maybe from grandma, from uh, auntie so-and-so, all those pieces have really uh, a lot of sentimental value and it just sits there and collects dust. And it's a shame because all those memories die off with the person that owns it at the moment. Mm -hmm. And if you take those pieces and take the usable pieces out and create something new, you can relive those memories and share them with the next generation and keep them alive, which is to me the most important part. I love that because there's so many beautiful pieces out there, but maybe they're not your style. So why not recreate them into something that still has a sentimental value, but that fits your style. So you're wearing it and you're proud of it and you feel great with it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you do a lot of reinventing of pieces. Now, if someone wants to reinvent a piece, do you go off of the idea that's in their head or do they come to you because you, that you have a certain style that they're drawn to and they're like, oh, can you make that style of ring for me with these pieces? How, how does it work? Well, either of the ways that you described, like they could have an idea with uh, already that they found or saw somewhere and we can start from that idea or I have my portfolio here with all the work that I've done over the years. And most times we just go through the photo book and find uh, things that people like or styles or um, it all depends like I have different styles that I work with but but you say like if somebody comes to me with an idea in mind I don't want to copy what's out there exactly but we can start with that idea and just go from there and just play with it and then we sit together and um, we work it out together really so the customer is really part of the whole process of designing so they don't have to have the whole vision if they can just bring something or even if have nothing, we can just work from the work that I've done already. And most times we find something to work with and go from there. Beautiful. You know, the, I, I'm so glad you were able to share your photos of the before and after of, um, of those pieces because they're, they're very, very, very different. So, very, you know, simple rings with beautiful stones and then turn into this modern, beautiful sculpture type yep. ring that is it's absolutely phenomenal thank you transformation so are there any particular i don't know i'm into energy so i can I, I feel the energy from different stones from different metals are there certain stones and metals that you love to work with because you you just you love the energy you love the feel you you, you love the play of of working with those types of uh, uh, elements uh, sure. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm still learning of, uh, uh, about like energy and stones, uh, which is really, really interesting what you say, like, uh, but like metals, uh, everything, what you say, everything has an energy. And, um, I really love, uh, uh like sapphires I work a lot with. There's a whole a lot of different kinds of styles and different colors in a sapphire, but mainly because it's a really beautiful stone. It's really hard stone. So it's really durable. And you can wear it every day. That's one of my bigger points too. If I do make a ring or a pendant or whatever it is, I want to make something that can be worn every day. You don't have to, you know, worry about it the whole time and yeah, go from there. So yeah, silver, gold, everything has its own energy. Silver is the feminine uh, energy symbolizing and gold. I'm not hundred percent sure what that energy wise for the, what it represents, but I love to work with gold as well. Do you, do you have any favorite types of jewelry to make it, it, you know, is it more so rings or pendants or it doesn't matter? Um, I tend to make a lot of rings because I like rings myself a lot, but I do a lot of pendants as well. So it's not really like it's this only particular kind, but rings and pendants. Yeah. I think that's the most. Okay. Well, if uh, you haven't seen any of Monique's work, one of her famous pieces, I hope you don't mind me saying this, is the family, the family tree, right? And it's so beautiful, beautiful ring there. So definitely check out Monique's designs. It's MoniqueVenwellDesigns.com. Monique, thank you so much for being on the show. It was wonderful to have you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we'll be right back with more on Oxford School Guide Life. Ever 
wonder what stood right behind me 150 years ago? Here in Pickering, at the northwest side of Brock and Highway 7, stood the Brome Central Hotel. Today, this historic commercial enterprise is housed here at the Pickering Museum Village. Originally a home, this two-story building became a temperance hotel in 1850. We've prepared your usual private room. Hey, thank you. I'm sure I'll sleep soundly tonight. It was a resting place for travelers, and for two shillings and six pence, it also served as a meeting place for local council. Ladies, the township council will be meeting very soon. We should retire. Located at the epicenter of the township, the hotel was witness to a lot of the laws and infrastructure decisions that made Pickering what it is today. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. On June 12th, there was a tragedy in a, in a backyard pool, and um, a six-year-old child drowned. And I thought it was really important to educate the community about how we can keep our children safe in our backyard pools, especially when we're having parties and people can get distracted. So with me here is Carolyn Clemenson, who is the aquatic manager uh, with the X Pool with the township of Uxbridge. So Carolyn, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Jackie, for having me. So you're gonna share some tips with us and uh, there's, we can prevent these tragedies. Actually, the one thing that I forgot to mention is that within Canada, there's approximately of all the, the of all the drownings that happen, 10% of them uh, within Canada are taking place in backyard pools. So we wanna prevent that. Yes, we do. And anything that we can do is important. And my first tip yes. is designate a water watcher. So your water watcher is watching everybody in the pool. They are responsible. They are not under the influence of any drugs or alcohol. I suggest that they have a whistle. It designates that they are a water watcher. And you just blow it to signal your neighbors that there or somebody else in the house that there's an emergency at the pool. I love that water watcher idea and if you are having a backyard party why not maybe shift it to someone else so it's not necessarily going to be the same person for the whole time if they want to be able to socialize and things like that. Definitely and just pass the whistle around. Okay. Um, if you do not have that option you're the only person you're the adult there with the children take designated breaks you know, as a lifeguard, we rotate every 20 to 30 minutes so that we have that chance to have a break. And you should too. Take the kids out of the pool, have a snack, have a drink, put on sunscreen, relax, and then go back in the pool. Okay. Now, what are some other things that we can do to keep our kids safe? We can um, wear a life jacket. So. We don't always know who are good swimmers and who are not when they come to our pool party. So have life jackets available. They are cool. They should be approved by the Ministry of Transportation and as well they should be the right size. Okay? Wear it. It's important to wear it properly and uh, make them cool. And you never know who's going to need one at your place. Your right. pool, your rules. Right, and it's your responsibility to keep everyone safe. Yes, it is. Now, I have also heard of being able to hire lifeguards to come to your backyard pool party. Do we have that in Uxbridge and Scugog? What you can do, because we do not hire out our lifeguards to work in your backyard pool. Okay. What you can do is send to your local aquatics facility a job notice saying that you have you want a lifeguard you need you have a job for them for x number of hours and then they will contact you okay that's awesome so it's just like okay i have a job posting this is my pool party date looking for a lifeguard yes and, and what a great way for you to still have fun at your own party and making sure everyone's safe definitely okay nice and Another thing that you can do is educate yourself on what drowning looks like. So okay. we all think of drowning as that 
splashing around and, and screaming for help. Drowning is a silent killer. People are scared. They cannot breathe, so their eyes are bugged. They're scared. They're trying to grab onto something, and it'll be in slow motion, and you will not hear a peep. OK. And so it's really that watcher role is so incredibly important. What are some courses that parents can take in order for them to know how to deal with the drowning and, um, you know, even rescuing someone and not getting injured yourself during the rescue is also really important. So what are some things that they can take? Standard first aid or emergency first aid, even basic first aid and CPR are important skills to have. You should have them anyway. Okay, right. And a lot of even workplaces recommend or even ask that so many employees of each department have it, so why not get it? And even if you're in a motor vehicle accident, it could come in handy as well, right? All the time. Swim lessons for your children, those are important. Um, find an instructor right now that's teaching backyard pool lessons, hopefully soon. We're all open that we can offer lessons inside. Yay, maybe the end of summer we can start having some lessons. Fingers across for the fall too, that everything will, uh, will work out that way. All right, so to keep everyone safe, we're gonna have water watchers, maybe even hire a lifeguard. Make sure we have PF PFDs and other flotation devices and taking courses and making sure we know what drowning looks like. So. And that can be tricky. You know, once in one of my first lifeguarding jobs, uh, this man went down the slide and I thought he was actually drowning, which he wasn't, but I saved him. So <laughs> anyways, we'll be right back with more on Oxford Scugog Life. It was our 35th anniversary. To celebrate, we were on our way to Mama Rosie's, where we had our first date. That's when we heard coming from the radio. So we stopped and listened. It helped us get to safety. So when I think of, I think of our anniversary, because now we have even more to celebrate. Mark Grice and I hope you'll tune into my show here it's called Mark Grice the artist and you don't want to miss it you get to see whether or not I can finish a painting in an hour I go from start to finish from a beautiful photograph sent in by the viewers to a finished painting you get all the tips and tricks that you need to make paintings on canvas right here on Rogers TV yet a second um, tragedy this school year. A young boy, 16 years old, in a single car vehicle accident um, at Concession 6 and Wag Road. And um, my heart goes out to the family and his friends that have been affected by this loss. But it's, it's not just his family and friends. I feel like the whole community is going through a grieving process. And so I thought for this segment, I would pull some cards from the Goddess Guidance Oracle deck. And um, so I can channel in some messages to help us through this process. Now, if you haven't been directly affected by this loss, that maybe you have your own loss you've been going through. And I have to tell you, um, the loss of this young boy has also been in alignment with the planets that the planet's vibration that is currently helping us with a heart healing, a really deep core heart healing, helping us to heal present and past tragedies, traumas. 
So this, the messages coming through, I asked to, to help us with this heart healing. So I had pulled cards just before we started this. And the first card that came up was upside down and this goddess itch, itch chill, medicine woman. So you are a healer. You have healing abilities within you. You have the ability to create healing within your own body, but also within others that are around you. So this is a beautiful message. You can see she's got lightning that she's creating from her own internal power. That inner power comes from our solar plexus, which is located above our belly button and below our ribs. And when you, you know, you can put your feet directly on the ground, take a nice deep breath in, breath into the ground, and as you breathe out, just feel that inner fire expanding. And that inner fire is going to help you with your own healing, and as I said, helping to heal throughout those around you. You need to be within that power in order for this healing energy to beam off of you, and it's also going to be coming through your words, so the vibration of your words. If you know someone who's currently going through a grieving, you can use gentle words of love, but also just be there to, to as that listening ear. And being within that energy, within your power, is going to help with that beautiful transmutation and healing of those around you. The next card that came up is Goddess Malu. Mother Earth. The message that's coming through with this particular card right now is we need to get out in Mother Nature and connect with all of the elements. So connecting with the wind and the air and the water and the fire. So not necessarily starting a forest fire or anything, but it might even be beneficial if you have the proper licensing to be able to do an outdoor fire, you know, maybe a nice bonfire or even within your fireplace right now. So connecting in with those elements, ground your feet down into Mother Earth, do some earthing. So take off those shoes and them in safe place, get your feet down in the soil, feel that soil underneath your feet. Feel the grass maybe underneath your feet and between your toes. Take a deep breath in to Mother Earth. As you breathe out, feel that amazing earth energy coming up that's filled with all the different crystals that are within the core of mother earth and feel that igniting and healing all the different cells in your body and that's helping you also to step into your power heal yourself and again it will help to heal around you it will help to heal the community or direct friends and family members that are around you the next card that came up is goddess segment be strong you are stronger than you think you are. And it's about remembering that inner strength. She has lions on either side of her. Goddess Sekhmet is normally associated with even the beautiful goddess body and the lion's head. So taking in that power of the lion, that courage. And you know what? That courage might need to be ignited to help those around you. Maybe you're a parent of a teen who is going through this greeting process. So taking in that lion energy will help you to be strong. And whatever you are currently facing right now, if you bring in that lion energy, it will be that reminder that you can handle whatever whatever life is throwing at you and when you need that assistance because sometimes maybe we can handle it but maybe we need that extra support maybe we need that listening ear or we just need someone there with us or maybe we need to we need to yeah as i said i was going to say talk it out that that is we need that listening ear so you might need to speak what you're feeling and not have someone necessarily solve your problems which is sometimes we might be drawn to doing sometimes we just need to speak and we need someone to be that compassionate ear to be with us so if you are going through the grieving process please reach out and get the support you need if you do have a team that needs support contact the gu a guidance counselor for that support or one of the local agencies to help you with bereavement so so we will be right back with more on Oxford School Gog Life. Family 
it's just extremely important. People move around, connected for success. It's just made it so much easier. For the longest time, I was on cloud nine. It connects you to family. It connects you to the outside world, and it makes you feel connected to the community. It was a whole new experience. You realize then how much you missed out. In fact, connect is my favorite word now. I love that word. It keeps me out of trouble. <laughs>